accident, you need a lawyer. And you deserve an advocate. Because every accident has a ripple effect. It affects your time, your health, your ability to make money, everything. That's where the advocates can help. Thanks to our decades of experience, we know what your case is worth and we'll fight to get you every penny you deserve. Consultations are simple and always free because you're not just a client to us. You're a person and you deserve the best help you can get. You deserve an advocate. This is The Monty Show, the truth in sports talk streaming. When you want unbiased opinions about your favorite team without the spin, all you have to do is find The Monty Show, streaming live and available 24 hours a day, seven days a week on YouTube. And now, here's Monty. Hey, hey, The Monty Program, all up in your YouTube stuff. Good Thursday morning, the greatest day in the history of sports. Yeah. NCAA tournament tips off today with BYU losing to Duquesne. Um, I know this because I filled out a bracket, so all of a sudden I'm a college basketball expert. Uh, it's what we do on the program. Yeah. You know, always good to see you. We are, as always, presented by The Advocates, theadvocates.com, the best injury attorneys in the business. You guys, it is craziness. I was outside for five minutes yesterday, and I saw a car in my neighborhood almost kill somebody on a bicycle. You get hit by a car while you're riding your bicycle in these beautiful spring conditions here in the great state of Jetta, no matter where you are. Sammy being filtered in, in Michigan already. Show hasn't even started in a dude getting filtered. Um, call the advocates. Get to theadvocates.com. Chat with an attorney live online for free. Yeah, you never pay the advocates a consultation fee. You never pay them a retainer. In fact, you don't pay the advocates unless and until they win your case. Chat with an attorney live online. It won't cost you a dime. Theadvocates.com. Uh, already, Sammy being filtered <laughs> dude <laughs> you can't make this up the like show how, the bro? show how? starts the show starts i fire up the old youtube machine because we use software outside of you yeah software so we go over to youtube the show starting and what do i see message deleted filtered sammy always always average to see you my friend <laughs> let's did he oh here's what he said I'm only checking back with these two to see all their predictions about Michigan losing players. Well, the portal's not open till May. What do you What do you mean? All I need to know. <laughs> Thank you, my friend, for proving your inequities. You can't. You can't. Try, okay. Uh, first in this morning was Lil Jizzy. Wow. He says the early bird gets the Jizzy. Yes. yes. Okay. I like that. Pete Forte, good morning to you. Matt Ritson, how are you? Um, uh, OG Gary, the writing is on the wall for the ACC. It's going to implode either the easy way or the hard way. I don't think that you're wrong about that, but the NCAA, the ACC, much like the Pac-12, they're always vulnerable. But the ACC is not going to go away without a fight. That much is very clear. Uh, in their latest filing in court, in their, I don't know, battle with Florida State and Clemson, now the ACC has absolutely gone on the offensive. You can see in their filings where they look at things very differently than Clemson. You're looking at the document that the ACC filed in their retort to Clemson where they seek a declaration that the withdrawal payment is valid and enforceable contract term applicable to Clemson. And if you read through this court filing right here, a declaration that Clemson owes fiduciary duties to the ACC as a member, damages for Clemson, Clemson's breach of the grant of rights, and damages for Clemson's breach of the covenant of good faith and fair dealings. This is, by any measure, the ACC going on the offensive. There's no way to spin this. Um, number three, a declaration that by accepting millions of dollars of benefits under the grant of rights and as a member institution that has operated under the grant of rights for more than a decade, Clemson is equitably e-stopped from attacking the validity of the withdrawal payment or the grant of rights or in the alternative, has waived any right to do so. It is very difficult to argue 
in with these terms that you're seeing on the screen, Jake, I, I don't know how you argue that the ACC is not in a very strong position if we are talking about a court fight. Absolutely. And, and I think that the ACC, you know, is, is well aware of that. I, that's the beauty of it. I mean, there are a lot of times in sports and in, you know, life and everything where someone might be in a strong position, but they're not acutely aware of the fact that they're in a strong position. And, and that's what I love about what the ACC is doing here. I don't disagree with what Gary said. Yeah, at some point, the ACC is probably not going to be in existence. But that day is not today. And that day is certainly not tomorrow or anytime soon. And the ACC is going to do everything that it can do to, to protect the longevity of the conference. And, and I tend to agree with the ACC's thinking that, hey, if you want to leave our conference, there's a price to be paid to do that based on the contract that you signed not once but twice. And I think... The, the the exit payment and the fees and the structure with which you leave that conference is built in a specific way so that if you leave, they benefit financially so they can go out and figure out what's next for their conference. So I've never understood why schools think that they can just, you know, say, yeah, we don't like the grant of rights anymore. So, you know, we we don't feel like it should be applied to us. It's It's unfair now. Uh, now that we're not happy with it. And that's what I think is is kind of crazy. Like, we don't really see this behavior in the Big Ten and the SEC. And everyone wants to point to, well, Texas and Oklahoma. That was a different situation, right? Texas and Oklahoma had no problem paying their way out. And they negotiated a fee and everything was good. And, and, and again, what I said yesterday, the Big 12 in that scenario was incentivized to allow them to get out of the conference. They had good reason to let them go so they could go ahead and move on. The ACC doesn't have that. So when you see the ACC going on offense, I love it. I think that this is what they should be doing. They should be saying, hey, yeah, the agreement is on our side. And if you want to keep running your mouth and you want to keep going to court and doing these things, we're going to start asking for things in return. And I think it's really smart. It puts Clemson and Florida State in a position where they have to decide just how painful they want this to be for themselves. And clearly they're not ready to stop, you know, filing motions and, and taking this thing to court. Yeah. I, I think the question that is on the table is, is the ACC going to survive? Is the ACC going away? It's certainly going to be altered in one form or fashion. I don't, I don't know how you, how you move forward amicably from here. The, the, this is serious language and the ACC is going to court asking for serious repercussions against Clemson and Florida state. And I think a lot of this stems from the fact that this God tier we all talk about is not going to happen for now, at least I think four seasons. And so you're looking down the barrel of less revenue than your competitors. And I think when you start looking at the fact that you're you're not going to make what the AC what the the ACC is not going to make what the Big Ten and the SEC are making. I think there is some concern um, about being able to play in the biggest games against the biggest opponents and have a level playing field financially and otherwise, and I, as there should be. But the bottom line is, you in the ACC, let's not let's not spin this. Let's let's be very honest about what the ACC has been. It's been a weak-ass, embarrassing conference for most of its existence in football. It has never been the preeminent football conference. Thanks. You look at the lesser-tier brands, the, the North Carolina States, the, the Georgia Techs. I look, at, I look at Miami, the University of Miami. It is humiliating how shitty that football program has been for so long when you had an absolute behemoth in the 80s. And yet you're just non-existent. You look at Florida State. We can sit here and spin, and Florida State is this, and they're this huge brand. Florida State hasn't been at the top of the college football world consistently since Bobby was, was there. Jimbo Fisher was an abject disappointment at Florida State and for most of his tenure. I don't know how you spin it any other way than that you are not making the money that the SEC and the Big Ten are making because you don't win at the level that the SEC and the Big Ten are, are winning. And the Big 12 is very much in the same conversation. We talked about this yesterday. 
I don't believe that the the Big 12 has a massive football brand. I don't believe that the Big 12 can make an argument it's one of the best football conferences in the country. Because plain and simply, it is not. And until it is, you have no leverage. You have no power. You have no bargaining power. And that is exactly where the ACC is. I mean, and if you want to make the argument, let's have it. Let's vet this conversation out. But I don't see a way that you have a, a an argument to be made if you're the ACC as the Big Ten does, where now you're getting Ohio State, you're getting Washington, you're getting Oregon, you're getting USC. You have multiple power brands in football. In the, in the SEC, you're talking about dynasties in Georgia and Alabama. And you're talking about real depth in that conference. Yet, if you're the ACC, where's your real depth? Where's your real dynasty? Where's your powerhouse? If you're the Big 12, same thing. It doesn't exist. That's the the hard truth that the ACC and the Big 12 are facing right now. And I don't know how else to, to describe the current landscape and the current financial situation happening in college sports. Well, and I think for the Big 12, they have more opportunity inside their conference to make a difference for the conference than the ACC does. Like, at least in the Big 12, you can look at some of these brands and you can say, okay, Sonny showed us at TCU that it is possible, right? Not that, not that you know, a brand like TCU or Texas Tech or, you know, whoever you want to look at is going to be in the playoff every single year. But what 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 I feel like Sonny showed is that, hey, you know, at the top of the mountain, you know, these programs can be in the college football playoff two out of every five to seven years. Yeah. And if you can do that as a conference – and you can have multiple teams that are competitive to that level, you're going to be just fine because you're going to make enough money to at least stay relevant in the big picture. And that's what I think is troubling. You look at the ACC, and and again, I know Dabo and Clemson went on their run, but it's been a minute now. It, it Like, it legit has been a minute since Clemson has been truly relevant from a college football playoff uh, standpoint. You know, and and yeah, I, I think the rest of the ACC is really not not even in the conversation. I mean, yeah, Florida State, sure. But ultimately that, okay, so let's say both of them are there. That's two teams out of your entire conference. Like you look at the Big 12 and it's like, all right, you know, if Texas Tech was good, they definitely would have a place. No question about it. If Joey figures that out, they're going to have a place. They're going to be a fringe team. No question about it in my mind if they can have a good season. You know, but yeah. it's why Baylor being so bad on the football field is so frustrating for the conference because they shouldn't be that bad. They should be in the conversation to be a, like in the new format to be a, you know, a 12, 11, 10 team. Yeah, but know? that team now is Texas Tech. Yeah. I, I, I think, and I know I say this every day and every time we talk about this, but if we're talking about the important brands in the, in the Big 12, Texas Tech has to be near the top of the list of importance. And it's why I think there's a lot more pressure being asserted on Joey McGuire. You, last year was a disappointment. And it, it, I look at Sonny Dykes at TCU. Last year was a huge disappointment. I look at K-State. I look at Kansas. I, I like this league top to bottom. You, you don't have to like Deion Sanders. This league needs Deion Sanders. Facts. The Big 12 needs Colorado to be good. Yeah. The Big 12 needs like Colorado basketball winning, getting it, playing its way into the, the field of 64. Hugely important for the Big 12 that that be a, a, a starting point, not an end point for Colorado basketball, right? It, you, you have to find a way to lift this conference. Arizona with its its financial troubles cannot be counted on. You, you just can't, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know what you say to Arizona State. I don't know. We were at we were on campus at Arizona State this past weekend. It's beautiful. And you're broke ass and you don't win games. Yeah. That's a real problem. So when we talk about again Utah being the preeminent football program in the Big 12, that's not necessarily a good thing because their brand is tiny. Utah football is a small brand. It is not a Texas or or in Oklahoma. And I guess we need to to let that ship sail because you're never replacing Texas and Oklahoma. Nope. nope. So we probably need to let that go, but these are these are very important times in the ACC and the Big Twelve because I don't believe that 
the the Pac-12, a lot of people are comparing the Pac-12 to the ACC. They're not close in any way, shape, or form. They're not comparable. The demise of the Pac-12 was pure incompetence. Uh, it was poor leadership. The inability to put a value on yourself. Like, it, it just, just everything that was wrong with that conference from the get. Right. The ACC, the biggest issue with the ACC is, in my opinion, that you have a brand like a Florida State who values themselves far more and above where they are. The conference does not. The problem is Florida State does. I think based on what Clemson says, Clemson does. Mm -hmm. And I think it is much to the detriment of the rest of the conference. Because if you can find eight current members, and now that you're adding Calford in you know, Dallas County... <laughs> You're, you're going to need, I believe the number is 10. If you can put 10 teams together and and figure out a way to get Notre Dame involved, you have a real chance to break the conference. You have a real chance to break up the, the ACC. Yeah, and I just don't know why a lot of the schools in that conference would want to do that, you know, and, and and that's the hard part is like, you know, the, the smaller school inside of these power conferences isn't incentivized to get on board with that. But again... Because you're a smaller school, you can also be leveraged into it. And, and I think that's what people, you know, kind of discount a little bit. Like these conversations absolutely happen. And if the UNCs of the world want to break up a conference, let's say, they're going to find a way to break up a conference. It's going to happen. And so I, that's why I say I think the ACC is fine for now. I don't think the ACC is going to blow up in the next you know, year or two. But I, I do think that that's on the horizon. I think that, you know, you can only go so long with schools festering inside your conference, if you will, before bad things start happening, which is why I say them going on offense, the ACC going on offense, and the ACC dropping the hammer like this is exactly what the doctor ordered. It's exactly what I would tell them to do. You have to be bullish with your member institutions right now. You have to tell them, hey, like, we don't know if we'll exist at the end of 2036, but we're going to do everything we can do to ensure we do. And that's why we're going to stick this to you. And, and I, I don't know, I guess I just don't know what else, you know, the schools in that conference would expect conference officials to do. I have no idea. Well, and I also look at, look at Troy Dan in it at, at Washington. You, you got hired what in October and now you just left and took the job at Nebraska. There's never been more instability at major programs than we're seeing right now. And I think all this, all this stuff does and all these conversations do is they sow instability. That's what they do. Anybody notice yesterday the SEC essentially made it official and said, yeah, we're going to play eight games because we can. And then in 2020, what, I guess five, 26, they can go to nine games. But why would you go to nine conference games when you control the when you control the the game itself, when you control the college football playoff? Yeah. The balance of power has shifted. And it's remarkable to me that it just so easily happened. And how do you reverse this now? Yeah, I don't think they're it is a classic, hey, you you let the horse out of the barn. There ain't no wine that back, right? Yeah, can't, I, can't I don't watch. I don't know how you fix it. You know, I, I really just don't know. Well, I mean, the How only true it. way to fix it, again, is winning on the field. I mean, that's the that's why the SEC has such a grip on it because there there's nobody in 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 the ACC or the Big Twelve that is going to go out and beat their top their top teams. And so the only way that this is shaken is if the top of the SEC begins to have instability. And some people might say, hey, you know, Alabama's got instability. Right, obviously, with the Saban situation, and Kalen DeBoer's done a good job so far. I think he's far exceeded expectations in recruiting. A lot of people felt like, oh, he's never going to be able to recruit. He's not going to be able to keep his kids. You know, they're going to hop in the portal, go somewhere else, and and some of that's happened. But but I think you know the the only way that you can, and I don't even think it's reversing it. I just think the only way that you can kind of you know crack the door open a little bit, if you will, is if the top of the SEC starts to flounder a little bit and teams like. Ole Miss or or let's say Auburn on the football field starts Texas, to have, you know, Oklahoma. Texas, Oklahoma starts to step forward, you know, and, and then at that point you can start to make the case, okay, well, maybe you guys aren't as strong right now. Maybe, you know, this is our opportunity as a conference to go out and win some games. I don't know. It it is 
it's just so disheartening. I, I, I think we are watching, we are watching the end of what could have been something really good. Yeah, I feel like we're watching consolidation in college football, and and the ACC is going to take a little longer to to fall in line, but but that's going to happen. And my only question is, what happens with the Big Twelve? Because I think Brett Yormark is the best of them when it comes to commissioners who know how to do business and know how to create deals that benefit two people. Because that's how you survive. You got to have a deal that benefits both sides uh, and gives the SEC and the Big Ten a reason to keep you around. Yeah. Yeah, the the whole thing is the whole thing is disappointing. Yeah. It is truly one of the 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 the, sh- the shrinking of college football and the shrinking of the the stations of power in college football is is terrible for fans. It is it is terrible for fans. There there is just there's just no no I don't even know how else you how else you describe it. It it is so, in my opinion, it is so bad for the average garden variety college football fan. Yeah, I mean, imagine looking at college football and not having any idea about like, you know, realignment or or what happened in the Pac-12. Like, there are going to be fans next year who have no idea what happened in the Pac-12, and then five years from now, there will be college football fans who don't know what the Pac-12 is, and that's the issue, right? The issue is is that is that when you look back on history in college football. What's going to be written? Because ultimately, you know, again, when I look at college football and, you know, in decades, like right now, this this past decade was dominated by the SEC, which is why they have all the control. And to your point, I don't know how you change that outside of winning on the football field, because that's the only reason they have the control. So so if they continue to win and they continue to dominate and they continue to only have to play eight conference games, it's going to be it's going to be a long time before yeah. you know we find balance. And and I will tell you I'm not convinced the ACC is going away cuz there is a path to to survival. And I I think a lot of it is a lot of it is going to be financial and a lot of it is going to be how many how many do they lose and is North Carolina leaving the conference or not? Cuz I still maintain North Carolina Tobacco Road is the the foundation of this conference. Use North Carolina and Duke, I think you're out. I think you're done. You can, you can survive as a lesser conference uh, without Florida State and Clemson because I just don't. Until Dabo's gone, I think Clemson is going to be an absolute dumpster fire because mm. the guy just doesn't. In, in my opinion, he doesn't want to win. I think he he he's fine winning if it's you know his way. I think they're just not going to be elite. I look at what we are seeing in college football. And I don't, I don't know where does, where does the bottom half of this conference go? Because there's not a whole lot of appetite, in my opinion. When I, when you look up and down at, at the ACC, mm-hmm. I just don't see a whole lot of appetite for for all of their brands. Yeah. I, I really don't. But that's just me. All right, let's get your comments in here. As always, brought to you by our good friends at Prize Picks. PrizePicks.com. Make sure you download the Prize Picks app. Use the promo code Monty. Celebrate my greatness. Didn't even have to take my clothes off for this one. How'd you do on prize picks <laughs> last night? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Otani's not going to come through for me today in this game. He, I think it's like the seventh or eighth, bet. and he doesn't have enough. Bet? No, not bet. That's nope. an Otani gambling reference. Uh, I won last night. No. Your boy, your boy, took it personally and held out on me. Kevin Durant didn't shoot a single free throw last night. Not a goddamn one. I needed 36 points, rebounds, and assists. I got 34. But thankfully, the should-be rookie of the year, Chet Holmgren, dropped 35 last night Mm -hmm. on your Utah Jazz. Do you think they know how to play defense and they just choose not to? Yes. Uh, and then Mookie Betts and James Harden, when he was not, when James Harden was not defending Kawhi Leonard, like <laughs> <laughs> running out to the corner yeah, and putting a hand up. Out. Uh, Mookie Betts and James Harden, way, way, way over the four and a half. I had them combined, James Harden and uh, Mookie Betts, 
four and a half total bases, I went more. Yeah. And considering Mookie just yacked all over your mom's face in Seoul, South Korea, that is to say he hit a home run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he went deep. Uh, he hit it far. Uh, the wood did the job. Uh, yeah. Thick. Yeah. Thickness yeah. and stuff. Nice. Uh, good night on prize picks. I won myself $56.25. You guys, it's what I do, and and at some point, I I do think you guys will come along to the fact that uh, I am both brilliant and good looking, and when you have that combination, guys, it's lethal. It is absolutely lethal. Just the, the stalwartness. I mean, the lethality of it is lethality. A word. Macaque. Mookie Betts has two hits, uh, or no, more than that. What the heck happened here? They're uh they're getting beat eleven to how about the Dodgers in the the Padres? Eleven San to eight Diego. Eleven to eight, the Padres lead. Uh my guy Mookie Betts is three for four with a run, four RBIs, and a bomb. I mean, listen, I I what else do you guys want me to do? I mean, I can only give you the money. This I can't shit's going good. I can't make you keep it. Yeah. So uh, baseball's back. Who are you, Watani's interpreter? NCAA tournament. You guys want my prize picks on NCAA tournament? Come on. That was funny. Come on. (laughs) Come on. I got Caitlin Clark for half a point. I have Dallin Hall from BYU at eight and a half points. I went more. He's got Duquesne 1040 this morning. Ho, ho. Uh, he needs to score nine. Dallin, Dallin, your, your name's please. Dallin. Okay. Uh, and then RJ Davis for uh, 20 points. No, Corlana has w- Wagner. Wagner. At uh, 12.45 today. Prize picks, use the promo code Monty. Hey, Monty. Get 100% deposit matching at prizepicks.com. Uh, Zesty's retro in games. Uh, so I, did. I can't wait for the Pac-12 style coverage by Monty. You should. Uh, and Donuts, member for 12 months. On the- uh, thank you for a year of entertainment. No, thank you for a year of supporting the show. We appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Who is uh, who is participating in the show? Lamont Tucker says, go blue. Wow. Yes. Uh, Pace and Cougar fan, Jake and Monty have show prep. They must get up and start really early. Yeah. Don't ask. Don't ask. What? You were awfully late this morning. It was five minutes late today. What happened? Forgot my phone. Oh, I forgot my phone. I did. Liar. And I forgot my Girl Scout cookies. Liar. Liar. Uh, Dak of the Tubs. I wonder what the dumbest thing Eric Wasikowski and Ferris Khan will say today. <laughs> Uh, do you think the NCAA works fast, Sammy? They don't. Sammy was in here saying that there's been no discipline. They don't work fast. Uh, Rick Forrester, the ACC is done. Okay. Uh, James, Oak State James, greetings from Kentucky, headed to the University of Kentucky. Oh, hi, Monty. Cincinnati and Louisville today. Hey, Monty. Okay. Monty. Hi, this is James. Welcome back. In a car by the road trip. Okay. I like it. Uh, and donuts. The ACC is getting ugly. May have a carryover into the season and negative impact. I think once you get on the field, I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. I, I truly do not. Uh, Rick Forrester, Vanderbilt makes more money than Clemson. Truth. Zesty, will it be helpful if more universities go after the ACC in court? Ask the judge. Because the ACC's case is pretty bulletproof. A judge is going to have to make a an unusual, unprecedented ruling not to enforce a contract. And that is very difficult for judges to do. Yeah. You know, uh, Maryland makes more money than Clemson. Rutgers, too. Uh, Kim Coulter, if you guys ever get to Puerto Rico, skip El Conquistador and just play Grand Reserve. El Conquistador didn't even have rakes for the bunkers with shitty ass West Texas dirt in them. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like uh... it. Kim, thank you for the tip. Uh, Vandy is working on their stadium. Monty. Hey, Monty. It's James up here in Jet Copter 69, boy. <laughs> 
just got over here to Vanderbilt. Hey, Monty. I believe I see them pouring some concrete down there. Yeah, it's going to get real hard and such. You know, I heard that the, the hot dogs were real good at this stadium. Vandy is working on their stadium. The finished stadium will be good when it's done. Okay. Okay. I'll look forward to the YouTube video. Uh, good morning, Monty and Jake. Another day of great content and shenanigans. Yes. Scott of Greywater Watch. 80s, the U uh, was elite in the early 2000s. Ah, yes. He's referencing, who remembers the name of the head coach at the University of Miami? Larry Don't um, Snort Coker. Um, Larry Coker. Larry. You guys remember Larry Coker? What was that, 2002? God. I mean, yeah, those were the days. They had some play, like the Ray Lewis years, like, remember Dennis Erickson? I mean, they had some years. It's been 20 years, at least, yeah, since they were relevant, I think. Uh, Miami's last good team was 2005. No, okay, now you're going to make me look it up. Was not 2005. Um... Let's see. Dennis Erickson finished number one in 91, 3, 15, 6, 2014. Butch Davis finished 20th, 14th, unranked, 20th, 15th, and number two in 2000, won the Sugar Bowl. Then Larry Don't Snort Coker came in and promptly went uh, 35 and 3. (laughs) <laughs> in 01, 02, 03, Damn. finished one, number two, and then number five. And then they fell off the face of the earth. Um, went uh, 04, finished 11th, 05, finished 17th. We're not ranked until Randy fucking Shannon. Randy Shannon. Nice name, dude. Randy Shannon. In 09. I mean, they, they... Randy. Come on. They haven't been relevant since 2003. The Orange Bowl, number five in the country. The U should be better. I, I, honest to God. The, the U should be better. They, re, they, they really should. Uh, Mark Hales, is Jake's girl real or is she like uh, Manti Teos? No, I've never met her. I've never met her. He says she's a six-foot blonde with D-cups. I don't believe it until Fucking I see a. I'm in. Why won't you bring her by the house? She's real. She's real, bro. Why won't you bring her by the house then? I have brought her by the house. That's a lie. Well, what I'm, I'm here. so bricked up right now. You're worried that she'll find me more attractive than you, and then you'll be single again. Wow. And I'll have a concubine. His cock. You know, uh, Wasikowski, Monty is delusion in delusional land this morning. Yeah, how's that, bud? All our all our favorites are here. All our favorites are here. It's gonna be great. Mr. Preston, good morning, casuals. Excited for some basketball today. Is today the greatest day in sports? I think it is. Like, like usually when we roll in to do the show, there's nothing on TV. We get we get reruns of Sports Center for like two hours. But that's or not the just case here. Anthony Edwards dunks. Yeah, well, it was the best dunk of the season. So ever, I mean, you know. I mean, obviously, we needed ever. to see it on replay, but but yeah, I do. I I think we've got we've got the tournament. Obviously, we've got baseball. We've got golf. NBA. Uh, I believe the NHL is on tonight as well. I think the opening tip, and try to follow me here. I think the opening tip of the NCAA tournament is one of the single greatest days in sports all year long. It is TV all day long. You and I both know that old Monty's son over here. Hey, Monty. I mean, I've got my bracket all set up for you guys. I've yeah. got my bracket. It is real. You know, I've got UConn, and I warned you about Iowa State. I they warned are. you about Iowa State, right? I done told you about North Carolina. North Carolina. They're going to lose. Bubba. Uh, I done told you about Creighton. Creighton. I done told you about Marquette. I done told you about UConn. UConn. Right? I got UConn winning the whole damn thing. Uh huh. You know, I mean, you guys, I'm here to make you money. Are you going to show them the better bracket or? No, there is no better bracket. bracket. Yeah, there is. Yeah, mine's better. I don't see it. I I mean, my bracket's obviously better. So, okay, there you go. Jake's got Purdue beating UConn. Yeah. Uh huh. Blame Jake. 
Uh, Jake has Jake has in the East. I think some of the worst picks in the history of college. I mean, UConn and UConn and Iowa State. You who picks UConn and Iowa State? <laughs> Better send those refunds. Jake in the West has North Carolina and Arizona. You have Arizona beating Baylor. Uh huh. So you just went chalk, as they call it. Yeah. Well, you're, neither of those teams are going anywhere, so I just figured, why not? You're Shot like, hey, we're. I'm just picking all. You're just Shot going the, the safe way. Shot in the dark. And I love that you have Grand Canyon beating St. Mary's. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then Shot you have the Grand Canyon beating Alabama. Uh-huh. And then you have Grand Canyon beating North Carolina. And then you have Grand Canyon beating Arizona. And then you have Grand Canyon winning the whole damn thing. <laughs> how do you, how do you have how true. do you have Grand Canyon going to the Sweet 16? So they're a good team. No, they're that's not. why. They're a good story, not a good team. Uh, then in the South, you've got Yiston. You're not taking any upsets here. Duke, uh, Texas Tech. Nope. Kentucky. Kentucky. I think Kentucky is fine. I think Florida is in danger against Colorado. Florida is in danger against Colorado. Watch that one right there. Yeah. But you got Duke and Kentucky. And then in the Midwest, you're slurping down that West Lafayette. I'm juice. slurping down that that Creighton juice. You like Creighton? Creighton. Creighton's getting Creighton's going to go far and then get eliminated. Yeah, yeah but I, I don't know why you would say Creighton and Purdue when we all very clearly know TCU is going to upset Purdue in the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The Horn Frogs. Xander Bogart slid in the second base head first, and his finger's not supposed to bend like this. Oh my God! Ow! Ow. Ow. Oh my God. Yeah, that didn't feel good, dude. That's not. Might, what might we want to put the oven mitt on. Anyway, and then Jake's final four is UConn, North Carolina, Duke, Purdue. Yeah. And then he chose violence with Purdue beating UConn. 150 points. Now, I'd remind you the much more sensible bracket uh, has UConn and Creighton with 173 points. Uh -huh. UConn beating North Carolina. North Carolina. Uh, who do you guys have winning the NCAA tournament? Let's talk about it. I want to hear from you. Um, Giggity says, just the tip is never the best. Well, you know, I mean, sometimes you got to do what you got to do, man. And and you know what? Like, obviously, you know, we've all had the just the tip experience, you know? We've all had the cack. just the just the tip experience. Right. How on earth is that the case? that we've all had just the tip experience. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, that's fine. I, it, you know, it is what it is. Um, let's see. Who do you guys have winning the NCAA tournament? OG Gary says Purdue. Dakota Tubbs says Arizona, it's a leverage pick. I, I'm curious. Man, I'm curious how Arizona survives this financial crisis. <laughs> That I am very serious about. I I I don't know, dude. That's that's tough. It is it is going to be interesting. Giggity says, "Let's go, GCU." Yeah. Sammy choosing violence this morning with all emojis, dude. I'm warning you now. You put in all those emojis, you tend to to run afoul of our friends at YouTube. So, Ferris Khan. Serious question: Does anyone actually do brackets with friends anymore? No. <laughs> Not unless there's money on the line. Yeah, is doing an is doing a tournament pool gambling. Yes, you think it is hundred percent. Well, yeah, because you don't know the outcomes, and you're putting money on it. That's gambling. Should you be able to do tournament pools with people at work? Yeah, for sure. I do think your percentages of winning go up if you can take advantage of some mooks at work in the office. Mooks at work yeah, in the office. You, know, you can stand around the water cooler and put out some false information in the conversation to sway the picks. Yeah. Yeah. Totes. So that's what I'm saying. If you're if your wager is on who goes the farthest in their bracket, you know, who can last the longest, then yeah, that's that's I'd take that bet all day. Ferris also says it's the first day of the NCAA uh basketball tournament and we're talking college football. So wait, and, and I just want to understand because I know I don't I don't with the you know, this stupid head of mine, I don't quite comprehend the Michigan greatness. 
College basketball is nothing more than a three-week betting TV event for most people. Is it even that anymore? Well, we're talking college football because, I, I mean, it, I, I don't think we've ever seen anything that's happening now happen before. Yeah. And I still think the NCAA tournament's a huge story. Like, I get that it's opening day, but should we be leading with the NCAA tournament over what is an unbelievable response out of the ACC to Clemson's filing? I don't think we should be. I don't. I mean, we could be talking do 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 yours. I mean, we can we can lead with how crappy Michigan football is going to be if you want. I mean, you we know. could do that. You know, uh, Force Ghost Fabio. We demand a proof of life of Jake's woman. Again, produce a six foot blonde with D cups, or it didn't happen. Because <laughs> that's what he's claiming. That's what he tells Mrs. Monty and I. Oh man, she uh, wow. And we've never met her. Wow. Well. Sucks so. to be you guys. Now I'm going to leave that alone. I, I, I'm I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, Giggity says, ha ha, Wasikowski claiming someone has the dumbest take ever. <laughs> Bro, Eric, you're, you are securely on the throne of stupidest take ever. <laughs> Don't worry that nobody's ever going to, nobody's ever <laughs> taken you out. Nobody. Uh, Robert Fowler, uh, got a root for little neighbor Iowa State for the next two weeks. Well, you can't root for, hey, and I, I, I under, I think wasn't it Robert Fowler who got all up in this ass over the, uh, the Alabama tackle that transferred, whose yeah. name? Well, Monty, he's going to Iowa State. Iowa State's legit. Iowa, Iowa. He transferred. God. <laughs> he transferred to Iowa, and now he is leaving Iowa. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Caden Proctor is the kid's name. Yeah. Iowa offensive tackle Caden Proctor yeah. re-enters the portal. Yeah. Why was Robert Fowler upset about that again? Or he was just bragging, right? And um, he's uh no, he was telling, because I said, why on earth would you leave Alabama to go to Iowa? Oh, right. And then he took that personally. Yeah. Yeah. Caden Proctor is going, in, but he transferred to and now he's transferring back to Alabama. Was it the cornfields? He's trying. He oh, hey, you're an loser. asshole, Monty. You don't know what you're talking about. You shut up and don't talk about Iowa. Caden Proctor's from here. He is corn fed and birthed here. Oh, dear. Oh, my. That is a local boy. He's no idiot out wandering around. Why would you? You don't talk about Iowa. He's transferring back to uh, Alabama. You shut your mouth. He was never good enough to play here. We never wanted him in the first place. Funny how much that happens. Yeah. You know, uh, the Ducks are going to beat Creighton. All right, let's talk about it. Let's talk. I'm a good listener. Yeah, let's 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 get into it a little bit. Let's you know, talk about yeah. it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, NCAA tip off day. Right. Is it the is it the best day of the year? I think it is. Um, You look at the schedule today. and. I'm sure that Caden Proctor is going to be paying attention to, oh, wait, I was not good at basketball. Uh, anyway, I'm sure Caden Proctor will be watching Alabama in the NCAA tournament. Um, but if you look at the, you look at the brackets, right? 24.6% have picked UConn to win a championship. 13.8 picked Houston and 10.2. Me. Picked Perdue. Perdue. I think it is likely, likely going to be, I think it's UConn. I think UConn's the best team in the country. I think UConn, is, if you're not picking UConn in one of your brackets, I think you're missing out. I do. Um, Sean Jenkins. Good morning, Sean. Iowa State. I think Iowa State's really good. But I don't I don't dislike your Auburn run that you think is coming. Yeah, I think Auburn is in a great spot. I think Auburn's talented. I think that, you know, they're they're his, historically speaking, they struggle when they're in the the first quadrant and they are in the second quadrant this year. If you're a big stat his, history geek, <clears throat> uh, you know, so they're in the second quadrant. Uh they have a pretty easy path assuming they win win their games. So that's why I think they're going to go on the run. And by the way, 
I do think that, um, you know, they're very physical and they're not scared to, to impose their will in that way to win a ball game, which I think is important in the tournament. I do think it's important. Obviously, Avi, it's important, but I, I look at, I look at like Arizona, Arizona's run to the, to the final four starts with long beach state at noon on TBS today. Um, I think this is so you have got to get as many tournament units as you can. If you're Arizona. Yes. I mean, I, I think it is so important. Um, I think you, you look at, you look at the, the, the East. I think Illinois is a real threat in the East. I mean, I, if, if, if you look at what I picked in, in the, in the, uh, East, I mean, I, I think UConn and Iowa State are are the two best, right? I, I don't even know that we yeah. argue about that. Yeah. But you look, B, I'm a little worried about BYU and Duquesne. I think Illinois is very good, and I think uh, Iowa State is elite. Iowa State and UConn are not separated by much. They truly are not. And I think that Auburn and UConn is going to be a hell of a game. I mm -hmm. think Illinois and Iowa State could be the game of the tournament. I think the East is absolutely going to be ball grinding. Yeah, I think the East is definitely there for toughest path to to get to where you want to go, no doubt. So you have UConn ending your Auburn Tigers run. Yes, I do. Which I agree, that's exactly the right thing to do. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think this is pretty. The East is one of the easier brackets to pick, in my in my humble opinion. Harry Austin, best long weekend of the year. So much sports on. Major League Baseball opening day, last weekend of spring training. Uh, you get the NCAA tournament. You get really good NBA games. Like Galf. there, there is a golf tournament. The Val Spar. So we'll we'll tell me you are not you are not prize picking on golf. Oh, I already got it done, dude. You're prize picking on golf. <clears throat> I already got it done, Man, bro. God. Yeah, I got it done already, bro. Yep. Yep. You are prize picking on golf. <clears throat> yep. I got I got Justin Thomas to, to have more birdies than Tony Finau in his first round. I've got Xander Shoffley to have more than 68 and a half strokes. And I have Jordan Spieth to hit uh more than seven and a half fairways on his round. Yeah. Robert Fowler, um F Caden Proctor. <laughs> <laughs> comes back and takes our money gives us a tampering violation and hightails it out because bama <laughs> threw him a big bag of money they didn't throw him a big bag of money <laughs> maybe iowa wasn't the fit that he thought it was why are we always just a small they threw money money they paid him why it it's it, it not f caden pro what happened to him being a local kid what happened to him being a hometown guy? Yeah, that's why he wants to play here, man. Go Hawks. Yeah. Yeah. Not F. Caden Proctor. RJC, man, another commercial, WTF. We don't control it. Yeah, it is what it is. Hey, playa. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm at Utah Pro Day. Thanks, player. I got in only things I've seen is, uh, is 49 or so coaches. I'll send you lots of video then I'm going to go hang out with Kansas and got basketball. This is your beloved. Okay. Big daddy magic. Love it. Harry Austin. Uh, I, I already read that one. RJC man says Con will miss you like never. Oh, is Ferris Con leaving? Okay, that's fine. Uh, this MLB opening day just uh, to return to spring training thing is a tease. It is. It is. Listen, I think, I think. The NCAA tournament is amazing. In the comment section, do you love the NCAA tournament? Because I, there's a lot of people who do not. I was surprised in the comment section yesterday. There were more than probably five, six, ten comments saying they were not following the tournament. Is it really possible as a sports fan not to follow the NCAA tournament? Yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty tough. I, you know, I said Monday, I think it was, that I'm not a huge fan of the tournament. But, you know, I, I, I'm a huge fan of good high caliber games and you start to get that in the sweet 16 and the elite eight. And I think once we're there, that's great. I will say, I, I will acquiesce and say that, that the upsets you get in the first round, um, are fun, you know, seeing nobody team you've ever heard of beat a, beat a bigger team is, is a lot of fun. So hopefully we get some of that. And I think we will, I think we will get a lot of that. I think you will see that upsets are always going to happen. 
There's no question about that. But you, the, I think gambling and sports gambling has become so pervasive. And we're going to talk about this Otani thing here in about 10 minutes. But you have so many, you have so many people that gamble on sports. I don't see how you can ignore the NCAA tournament. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I honestly don't think it's possible. It's massive, man. I mean, it, it does take over the sports world for, a couple of weeks. Yeah, and, and I, I I think it is one of the most enjoyable days. And honestly, good, what are your favorite days in sports? Well, Major League Baseball opening day, certainly, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I think um, certainly World Series season. I love fall playoff baseball. Um, but uh, individual days, obviously Super Bowl Sunday. Obviously, college football playoff national championship day is awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, those, I think, are the major ones. For me, I think it is NCAA tournament tip-off, no doubt about it. Major League Baseball opening day when everybody's playing. Um, Masters weekend, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, Sunday yeah. of the Masters is, it, I'm glued to the TV. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely love it. Um, I think there's no question that the the weekends of NFL playoffs I love them. I do love them. I hate Super Bowl Sunday, though. I'm I'm that guy. But I think if if I had to drill down to like the favorite days and periods of the year in sports, I don't think there's any doubt that Major League Baseball playoffs, Stanley Cup playoffs, the biggest games in the biggest sports. That's where I'm at on it. I, I yeah. That's why I love the Masters. I love 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 the four days the Masters are on TV in April. It's special, dude. It's absolutely special because you know what it is like, like if you're like, if you live, you know, in the U S like you, you start to experience the warming trend of spring and the masters are on and you're like, yes, dude, it's like 70 out. It's sunny. The masters are on like, you know, like, you know, when, when, when we're working, like I'll, I'll always have like right now I'll have the, like today we'll have the tournament on, on, on the old MacBook here while we're, while we're doing our thing. Uh, and it just makes it better. You know, it makes it better in my opinion to have, have something on. I I'm, I'm definitely that guy. I like to have on, even if it's just rando baseball game in the middle of the summer, I'll have something on. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's no question today is one of the best days in sports. Yeah, totally agree with that. <laughs> Dakota Tubbs. If you don't love the NCAA tournament, you're a Putin sympathizer. Let's not please takes one can, to know. Can, can we not? Mike Smith on the road today. Hope everyone is doing well. Hate missing the show. We hate you missing the show. Mike. Are you finding Are you finding Neil Brown's replacement? Or you know, are you you know? Never mind. Uh, James, I love the NCAA tournament, but October is my favorite time of year. NFL, college football, and the World Series. Yeah, I do, I would I agree with that. Dakota says I for one love March Madness. I, I do too, Pooty. Absolutely. Rick Forrester, if you don't follow the NCAA tournament, then you must be six feet under. That's what I'm saying. Like, how are you at all any kind of fan of, of sports and you don't follow the NCAA tournament? Yeah. That's I, crazy to me. I have no idea. That That's crazy. OG Gary, I am meh for the tourney. I love making brackets, though. It, it, totally reasonable. To well, it, you're a Utah fan. Well, an LSU and a Michigan but also a pedo state. But anyway, well, and I heard you were recently an Arizona fan too. So, you know, yeah. Um, come on the big screen. I wouldn't TVs are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Aim control is huge. Yeah. Uh, I'm only following cause my Oregon ducks are in. Otherwise I don't even watch really fascinating. RJ Seaman, Red Sox having 20-year celebration honoring Tim Wakefield, Kurt Schilling not going because he's afraid to face music for outing Wakefield's illness, as he should. He's a he's a D-bag. Yeah. There's no question about it. San Diego State, my MLB opening day, F the A's. They're dead to me until ownership sells the team. Well, <laughs> better become a Padre fan. Uh, Big Daddy Magic, my favorite game sports is when Victor comes to Utah. Okay. Victor's the way. Pretty, I should have seen that coming. Yeah. Pretty predictable. Hopefully Victor does too. Yeah. Rick Forrester. See, see, I see what you did there. Me, the first day of cornhole. Okay. 
Cornhole, what you do in your bedroom is up to you, man. RJC, man, today is top five sports day. Absolutely. Favorite sports day, college football opening weekend and every weekend, Masters, golf opens, NBA playoffs, MLB opening day, and the tennis majors. You're a tennis guy now? Bro, you, you're not serious that you have action on tennis. Well, Rafa Nadal, bro. Come on. Come on. You, you're being serious, Gary, that you're a tennis guy. Yeah, he loves Jock Itchovich. What? Pickleball wasn't good enough for you? You had to go full on tennis? Pickleball is so just massive. It is wild to me how many people are just into pickleball. And it still keeps growing. It's... Oh, oh, please. Show hey. Show hey. Your mom. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Jake's prize picks oh just died at the god, warning god, track. Bro. Bro. <laughs> dude, oh. I understand that you know you got piped by your interpreter through a bookie, but maybe you could have hit that one over the fence for two holes over here. How is Shohei not suspended right now? Jesus. We'll talk about that in 2 minutes. Um, wow. That almost went out of the yard. Jake almost, seriously. <laughs> Every Saturday, my dogs play. Like at the dog park? What do you have, some shih tzus? That's cool. Well, they, uh, you know, they have, you know, fastest dogs in the league, apparently, huh? Hmm. Yeah, Roman Dunes. No. <laughs> NCAA. What now? Let me tell you what now. San Diego State tips off. Tip offs are electric and adrenaline infused. Yeah, the pro rata you deserve. Yeah, dude. Hundo P, bro. Yeah. Stay hard. Hundo P. Uh, Big Daddy Magic. My favorite game in sports is when Victor comes to Utah and we WrestleMania Royal Rumble at any time BYU loses and gets illuminated. That's my favorite time in sports. Illuminated. Okay. Okay, Big Daddy. Uh, Mark Hales. Yes, please keep something on. Okay. Neck it. Sean Jenkins, nothing against golf, but I can't watch it. Today is the best day. There are some anti-golf folks. Gigatti, it doesn't get much better than grilling some burgers and brats on MLB opening day with an ice cold beer. Yeah, Seriously. By the way, Giggity, we went to Oregano's last weekend. We got a large thin cut sausage and onion square cut pizza. Thin crust square cut. Say that fast. Yeah. I so miss good pizza. In Utah, we do not have good pizza. Nope. We just do not. And I'm telling Oregano's Pizza in Phoenix. Bomb. Good Lord. That was so good. Uh, San Diego State, Glenn, I'm on the road and I'm here. Casual, strong. That's my guy. Good to see you, RJC, man. Pitt being snubbed, still filled out brackets with my dad. Loving doing that with my dad. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Wasakowski, McCarthy, Memorial Day weekend is the greatest day in sports. Indy 500, Monaco, and the Coke 600. Motorsports are great. I don't disagree that the Indy 500 is still Rick Mears. It's my guy. Uh, tennis majors, Ugh. G. Lee says, Ugh. Yeah, he said, Ugh. I'm still waiting for an explanation from good old Ugh. Gary. Gare Bear. Kim Coulter, if you're a golfer, you must go to the Masters at least once. Saw Kenny Perry blow it in 2009. Ooh. Ooh. To find you. I like tennis. Wimbledon finals is great. Okay. Uh, Edward Wayner, like 46. Does that mean the 46 ranked tournament team will win? That's exactly what I think. It's it is. an omen. That's what it is. Force goes Fabio. Rip Jake's prize picks. Dude. Sorry, buddy. I, I, I'm literally sitting here at he. I needed him to have four and a half, seven. Okay, so how see, it works on prize picks, yeah, yeah, is more or less than how many w w total bases? So it's Otani and Steph Curry. Steph Curry last night for more than six and a half total bases, three pointers made oh, together. Balls. So Steph had a tough night. Yeah, yeah. Steph had a tough night. Where are you at right now? Four. Oh and my god! Six and a half, so that would have done oh it. Oh my god! That would have done it. It's only the bottom of the seventh. Yeah. So, and the Do the Dodgers are rallying. Yeah. So hopefully, so there's a chance that the great gambler gets another at bat here. The great gambler. Let's call him Kenny Rogers, dude. Dude. You know, uh, Dak of the Tubs, OG Gary trying to be like his idol, Tayshawn Booty. 
Kayshawn Booty. All right, let's talk about Shohei Otani. Because I, you guys, have you heard about this? Shohei the money. <laughs> Shohei Otani, the L.A. Do, 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 lawyer um, who does not speak English. I believe he's Japanese. He has an interpreter. Longtime friends, very close. Very, very close. Him and Innocent Interpreter. Yeah. Okay. The interpreter gets in deep with the sharks. <laughs> the interpreter goes to a gambling hall where he's playing in a card tournament. Now, when I say the interpreter, maybe I should say the interpreter that is a gambling degenerate. Yeah. He is a massive gambler. At this card tournament, he allegedly said what he said. Allegedly. Uh, he allegedly meets a bookmaker. They strike up a relationship. He loses millions of dollars. Nobody knew this was going on. Well, that was until yesterday when the LA Times outed the fact that the, 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 the lawyers fired the interpreter oh. for stealing a minimum of four and a half million dollars out of Shohei Otani's bank account. So where the story ends, right? Not so fast. The interpreter goes on the record and says, well, actually, asshole American media. What had happened was. What had happened was. it. I asked Shohei for the money. He wouldn't give it to me because he was concerned that I would go and blow it on more gambling. So he wired the money to the bookmaker himself. Got on Buddy's computer himself. The story goes, Otani did. Got on the interpreter's computer himself and did it. Wired four and a half million dollars to a bookmaker. A major league baseball player not named Pete Rose. Wired four and a half million dollars to a bookmaker. And he's currently playing in a major league baseball game. Everybody knows it happened. It came from his personal bank account. And yet he is still playing in a major league baseball game. But Monty, he's the victim. Am I the only one that thinks that this is absolutely absurd that Shohei Otani is not suspended? Listen. Uh, that's fine. Okay, well, Monty, he didn't place the bets. Okay, cool. But according to the lifelong friend interpreter, bro, Shohei Otani himself got on a computer and wired money to a bookmaker. End of story. And you know how we all know that Major League Baseball knows? Because they put out a fake story saying that this cat stole money from Shohei Otani's bank account. Why would they do that? Well, they did that to insulate Shohei Otani from any gambling allegations. Yeah, the only problem with that is now the interpreter spoke because you tried to wreck him. What do you do with this? Dick, can you suspend Shohei Otani for gambling? Uh, I don't think they want to. I think you could, but I don't think they want to. And because they don't want to, they're not going to. And... I think that Major League Baseball, you know, treats certain players a different type of way. Shohei Otani is the face of Major League Baseball right now, man. And you're 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 going to do everything you can do to protect that brand to to like they're playing in South Korea right now, the Dodgers and the Padres. And and you know, Otani is obviously a huge a huge highlight of that trip. You're not going to take him out of that game. You're not going to you're not going to discipline him for this because you that's going to hurt Major League Baseball's brand. And and yeah, I mean, I, I tend to agree whether you made the bets or not. You are still from your personal bank account wiring four and a half million dollars to this guy, this bookie uh, to get your boy out. So to me, I, I, I look at it and yeah, I mean, look at this policy, right? Like prohibits players and team employees from wagering uh, even legally. Like you can't, it, it doesn't matter if it's illegal or not. Like he's involved in it. So that's why I'm saying he's getting a free pass. There's a double standard here because it's Otani. 
And I understand from a business model perspective, yeah, you obviously got to make some decisions based on a player, the size of a player's profile. But what I think is so funny is that this cat's getting a free pass for being involved in a gambling scheme with a bookie and Trevor Bauer is still sitting on the sidelines and he's guilty of absolutely nothing. That's what's Shoei crazy. Shoei Otani is not being punished because he's Shoei Otani. Yes. And again, I'll put the policy back up. It bans betting on other sports with illegal or offshore bookmakers. Betting on baseball is punishable by a one-year ban from the sport. At a minimum, he placed four and a half million dollars with an illegal bookie. How do we it's illegal? How do we know about this? Oh yeah, because the the bookie that he gave the four and a half million dollars to is under federal investigation for bookmaking. Mm. <laughs> oh, this is called jackpot. This is jackpot. Your buddy, your interpreter, screwed you. It, plain and simple. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. You should be suspended pending the investigation of these these gambling activities because nobody's denying that Shohei Otani wired this money to the bookie. How is this cat not suspended? Yeah, well, I, I, you know, I, I think that Major League Baseball is just going to simply spin this and say, you know, it's like what you said, right? I mean, first they came up with a cover story. Now, now they're going to spin it to say, hey, well, he he was a victim of his interpreter, and he he, you know, obviously wanted to get his longtime friend out of trouble, but then that's it. They're done with him. So, you know, I. I I tend to agree. Like I, I hate, I, I feel like kind of an asshole saying this, but it's the rule. Like the rule is the rule. Like the policy is in place for a reason. And, and again, you know, you have the classic Pete Rose defenders, you know, but if you're going to treat Otani this way, you can't then be that hard on guys like Pete Rose or other <sighs> dudes in other situations because you set a double standard. Again, right here. Yeah. Uh, he yes. And also bans betting on other sports with a legal, illegal or offshore bookmakers. So the, the question, guy's under a federal investigation for being an illegal bookmaker. So the question for Major League Baseball is, is what kind of precedent are you at risk of setting for not punishing Otani? And I maintain that you're, you're on a very slippery slope. I understand if Major League Baseball wants to make the argument that Otani had nothing to do with this and it was his book or his interpreter getting in trouble on his own. But the problem is you can't have it both ways. We can't be saying, Hey, he's a victim because his childhood friend took advantage of him. But, but then we're going to ignore the fact that it is his childhood friend who he's bailing out. So you're going to tell me he had no idea this was going on. And all of that to say Shohei Otani knowingly and willingly got on a computer and wired a known bookmaker four and a half million dollars. Yeah. So plausible deniability is out the window. Did you wire the money to the bookie yourself? You did? Okay, you're suspended for a year. Period. That's it. And I, I, it, the hypocrisy here. But they're not going to do that because it's Otani. And specifically, like if this was, you know, if this was Fernando Tatis, right? Mm. Or, 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 or a player that was of South American descent or maybe from the Dominican, let's say, or whatever, right? Not from South Korea or or Japan or that part of the world and not the face of baseball, he would be suspended. Yeah. And, and I'm a big believer that Major League Baseball has for ages dominated the, the you know, the, the, you know, the South American player who wants to play baseball. They've, they've built that pipeline. So they don't have a need necessarily to protect those guys. But overseas, where they're trying to expand, where Otani happens to be from, they're looking at this and saying, okay, Otani's the face of baseball right now. Probably the best player ever, honestly. The stats say he's the best player ever. So, yeah, we're going to cut him some slack. And I just think that that's a dangerous precedent to set. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, I see a lot of this question in the comment section. He paid off his buddy's debts. He did not gamble. It doesn't matter. He sent four and a half million dollars directly to a bookie. 
And now we're supposed to believe an admitted gambling degenerate that it was for his bets. How do we know Otani didn't bet? And again, Major League Baseball has routinely set precedent. Trevor Bauer is a very interesting example. The story doesn't matter. What did you do? Yeah. Well, what you did is you wired four and a half million dollars to a bookie. It doesn't matter. It it does not matter. I I, I don't know. I, I think it's very interesting that this is how all this is going to play out. I think it's very interesting that you're looking at a situation where the game's biggest star is caught up with a with a bookmaker at the for the tune of four and a half million dollars. And by the way, I just want to point this convenient little detail out. Maybe people affiliated with the Los Angeles Dodgers should stop doing things in the city of San Diego. God Just damn. a thought. Because that's thought. where this happened, by the way. Um, he went to this poker tournament, card tournament, yeah, in San Diego. And this bookmaker got his hands on him. Yeah, the bookmaker got in contact with Otani's interpreter. And the trouble started when the bookmaker offered... Otani's interpreter, uh, a line of credit to gamble on. And uh, uh, Otani's interpreter. Which is what bookies do, offer lines of credit. Yeah, so Otani's interpreter makes it very clear that he's uh, he says it himself. I'm terrible at gambling, and the only way I thought I could get out was by gambling more. So he ran it up to $4.5 million. And Otani gets his contract. Everything's cool. Okay, cool. Drops in the bucket for Otani. Fine. But... You can't have it both ways. You can't have a policy in place that says, hey, you know, you're not to gamble on other sports. Obviously, you can't gamble on baseball. Uh, and then have your guy wiring money to a bookie. I don't care why he wired money to a bookie. That's the price of uh, the the price of, hey, dude, I can't help you. Like if Otani would have said, hey, I can't help my friend here because that's going to get me suspended for a year. Yeah, that's the price of doing business. We all make decisions. And and that's mm. why I have a problem with the argument of, oh, well, he didn't, he, Otani didn't gamble. I agree. How do we know? How do we know that Major League Baseball is not covering up the fact that Otani gambled? How do we know? How how do we know that the, the gambling activity of Otani's interpreter, again, who he's known for his whole life, basically, they grew up together. How do we know that Otani's interpreter wasn't placing these bets on behalf of Otani? How do we know that? Well, that's right. We don't know that. We're just getting fed a story. It's four and a half million dollars you're never seeing again. So and four and a half million dollars to Otani is absolutely nothing. Like, sorry to tell you. When you have a seven hundred million dollar contract. But what did you joke with me about yesterday? Yeah, for sure. Good thing he deferred all that money. <laughs> Good thing. Because remember, he's making like 50 cents a game now because he deferred all of his money. Uh, he did not wager, so how can you suspend him? It doesn't matter if he wagered. He sent four and a half million dollars to an illegal bookie. Yeah, it, end of story. That's it. Uh, does your opinion change if he wired the money to the interpreter? Well, this has been much bandied about as well. Uh, the interpreter story again is that he only wired the money to the gambler, to the bookie. Because he didn't want to give it to his interpreter because he he believed the interpreter would, would blow the money and not pay the debt. And the obvious inference here is the bookie's physically threatening the interpreter. He's threatening him. There, and I, I that's what bookies do. And if you don't, this story is long told, multiple, multiple people have fallen into this. Millions of people. I don't have, I, you know, I'd love to, to play some bets with you. I don't have any money. Well, how about I extend you a line of credit and you're going to win. So once you win, I'll just take that money out of your winnings and you don't win. You never win because you never get out from under the sharks. You don't. So would it change my opinion? I mean, maybe then it's a loan to a friend. But if he knew, it doesn't change my opinion. You you provided four and a half million dollars to an illegal bookie. There's no getting out of that. There's a you got caught. There's no getting out of that. Uh, San Diego State Glenn just saw a YouTube commercial for the new Smash Jack Burger. 
I'm so bricked up right now. Back to our regularly scheduled program, Suspend Wire Sender Boy. I'm so bricked up right now. <laughs> Suspend Wire, wire sender, sender Boy. boy. Sign Steeler guy. A burger sounds so good. A burger. We got these little like pizza baguette things. Yeah, how were those? Were those good? Dude, so good. So good. I took my dog for a 15-minute walk last night. After my day was over, you know, you work all day and... I took my dog for this walk before I left. I threw the baguette into the toaster oven, into the like little air fryer thing. You don't do that. <laughs> it takes about 35 seconds to cook them. But dude, I, I, it, it's a margarita pizza baguette. You throw it in the air fryer, pull it out. Thank you. Uh, pull it out. Throw a little ranch dressing <laughs> on the plate. <laughs> you dip that pizza in that ranch dressing, and that thing is my god. Yes. Oh my god, so good. Uh, Wasikowski, baseball is a thing. Haven't watched since Ichiro. Okay, cool, dude. Always good to have your contribution. One hundred percent giggity. Does your opinion change a bit? Well, I do agree with you, though. He should be suspended. You can't just give him a free pass on this. Yeah, because what's going to happen to the next guy? The next guy is going to say, oh, well, my friend was in trouble. So, you know, I had to wire money to the bookie. And, you know, it just is what it is. Yeah. Taylor Smith, good morning to you. He says early morning radio with Monty. Hey, Monty. Hey, Monty. Hey, Taylor. Uh, Chris E., how would they cover it when it's already under federal investigation? I think it's the only reason they came up with this cover story. The wild thing is. The bookies under federal investigation for illegal gambling. <laughs> and it's not like this is, it's not like this is Cody Bellinger or who's pick your shitty Cubs player, right? It's, Mike Talkman. It's not like this is Talkman. Talkman. God damn it. It's Talkman. Okay, cool. Who cares? He sucks. Thank, well, that's he good hasn't point. earned the rights for me to know his name. It's not like this is Mike Talkman. Yeah. You know, it's Shohei. Otani. Yeah. It's Shoei Otani. Okay. Is this him right here, actually? No, I think this is Jason Otani Hayward. coming up. Oh, it's Hayward. Okay. It's Shohei Otani, the biggest baseball superstar in the world. Arguably the most known professional athlete in the world. Yeah. What would this be if it was Mike Trout or Bryce Harper? But see, if Bryce Harper, yes. Mike Trout is invisible. Mike Trout's invisible. Doesn't even matter. But what it does tell you is, these guys are so vulnerable. They are always the target of some some kind of scheme. Yeah. It's wild. But my point on the, to your question, Chris, I think we would never have heard about this if this bookie wasn't under investigation. Because that's the only reason it came to light is because the federal investigators found that you had a a known baseball superstar associating with a gambler. The wire transfer is what out at this whole scheme schemers yeah. schemers your boy otani is going to get another bat there's only one out in the bottom of the eighth with two on so they're running through the order schemers trying to control their little world he's got every chance to screw you like your name was molly yeah i, um, I mean come on dude like why walk just let him get one more at bat come up and hit a bomb and we'll be fine and we'll all go home happy yeah. including his gambler uh, RJC man, integrity of the game is at risk. Have to suspend him for a year. I agree. Delaric, you know, it would be funny if this bookie is also one involved in Michigan. Easy. Hey, playa. Big daddy magic says Shohei obtain, obtain is married. Shohei Otani. <laughs> uh, Shohei obtain is married to a W wrestler. I got his wife's autograph. A second matter. That was a mob shoe. He. His autograph goes for $800, playa. Nice. Sweet, dude. Sweet. Sweet. Uh, Big Daddy Magic also says, it should be a gambler because I am a follower of Victor. I probably would be a billionaire. Well. Can't win every night, can you? Stupid is as stupid does. You're only as stupid smart as... Stupid is a, as stupid does. And I, I say this all the time, but man, you can't surround yourself with negative people. People who speak negatively, people who act negatively, people with a bad demeanor. You have to surround yourself with positivity and light. And I just think the the timing of this is so interesting, too, because, you know, this had been going on. And, and, and what I really struggle with when we talk about the suspension piece, I don't believe Otani had no knowledge of this. 
No I chance. Don't, I don't believe that Otani was just in the dark and had no idea that his friend was in deep with the Sharks. Like, I, I, I don't buy that. I don't buy that that a guy as intelligent as Otani is because you don't just luck into being the best player, the best baseball player in the world, right? This guy's smart. This guy knows how to go about his craft. He knows how to, you know, build his life. Like he's done a great job so far. Yes. He is very intelligent. And he is a very calculated Shohei Otani from what I understand is a very smart, intelligent, calculated dude. So if he is that dude based on reports, you're and, telling me he doesn't know? And you guys know if Shohei Otani came into the comment section, he would hit the like button, such as in like yourself. Well, now, if if <clears throat> if Shohei Otani's interpreter came into the comment section, they would smash the like button the same way they were saying, hey, hit me one more time. No, he would. If Shohei Otani came into the comment section with this interpreter, they would bet the over on the comment on the <laughs> like. Button. Well, no, don't take hey, You know, this money show sucks. Not many people hit the like button. Let's go under 100 today. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong that Shohei wouldn't be like, all right, bro. I don't oh, hey, Monty. We took the under at that poker tournament and we lost. We better go over on this one. That money, he sure is good looking. Yeah, and the, the under, the under is a little cheaper. I mean, we've racked up, you know, four million, you know, we're four hundred thousand million dollars in debt here. Yeah. We better go with a sure thing. Yeah, take the under. We're running out of runway on the credit line here, so uh, better take the under. Because we all know Monty Show listeners don't hit the like button <laughs> ever. You know, <laughs> just watching Mookie Betts help yeah. me win at uh, Prize Picks. Yeah, that's whatever. Prizepicks.com. Uh, let's keep rolling. Jake Retzloff scheduled to join us here in about six minutes. We'll get an update on the uh, BYU quarterback battle. Uh, Marcus Stuckey, uh, funny how to me MLB is going to head first, uh, is going head first with the cover up. Yes, dude. Are they like, come on, bro. This True is true words have dude, never been spoken. This is, this is a classic code 10 abort, cover the whole thing up. Like, you Shoei know, Otani, he does nothing wrong. Yeah. Like, dude, he, what? Otani? Only- I mean, Shoei Otani, he is pure as the driven snow here in Los Angeles where we don't get any snow. Um, you know. Yeah. He can never do – I think you're exactly right. They will They will go as far as they need to to protect him. Dakota, what is wrong with you? Monty is all about pulling out and spraying the ranch. Yeah, dude. <laughs> That's very well done, Dakota, actually. I don't care if he is suspended, but feels shitty that the dude was trying to keep his friend from getting whacked. Have yeah, better friends. But again, so I agree with that. But also, uh, Jim, it's the price you pay for having a friend that gets involved with that type of stuff. And when you lose four and a half million dollars to a to the street, as they say. Um, you're not a very smart guy. Yeah. And, and you're talking about someone who self admits that they're awful at gambling. It, uh, openly, like, like openly says I'm terrible at it. like, like, dude, imagine if I rolled up and I was like, yeah, Hey Monty. Yeah. Um, so look, I'm bad at gambling and oh, okay. Well, here's four and a half million dollars. <laughs> like what? Are you kidding me? You know, uh, Dakota Tubbs, hit me show a one more time. Dude, hit me. <laughs> <laughs> hit me. Oh, hey, 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 man, can you Venmo me, um, you know, 50 grand for tonight? I mean, that's a uh, Lady Gaga song that he's hit me, baby, one more time yeah. by Lady Gaga. Right, Lady Gaga. Right, right. I'm kidding. It's not. Yeah. It's not what you. Yeah. Look at my guy, Mookie Betts, driving him in. Now, man, you know who's coming so up. I'm glad that Otani. Now, you know who's coming up. The great gambler is coming up. Everybody's favorite prop bet is coming to the plate right now. See, we had done so well with the Josh Giddy jokes when that whole thing went down. Yeah. That, over under know. 15 on Josh Giddy. Yeah, oh, shit. Know. What was the over under on Giddy last dude, night? Seven and a half. <laughs> and he lost. Dude at three points. Like, are you kidding me, bro? <laughs> <laughs> like, I took the under. Ah! I took the over. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Show okay. Otani is okay, at the plate. Uh... Ground out. Yeah! God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> ah! 
You know, for somebody who's <laughs> such an idiot with their interpreter, you would think that you'd have had a better night tonight, bud. The tying run was in scoring position. Shohei Jesus. rolled over to first base. 12-11. Padres over the Dodgers going to the ninth. Good Lord, dude. <laughs> Man. Oh, my God. You are so mad. Okay. We're moving on to the Valspar now. We're moving on. Moving on to golf. You're prize picking golf. Yeah, moving on to golf. Let's see what the schedule is. All right, here we go. Golf. Listen, man, uh, to put a bow around this show, hey, thing, I think you got to suspend him. Yes. I, I just don't know. I don't know how you, I don't know how you do it. Uh, any other way because you're sending a message that it's okay to bail a friend out and i i just think whether you you got to safeguard that stuff you know how many people ask these guys for money mm -hmm. do you know how many people approach professional golf scotty Scheffler made eight and a half million dollars in in less than seven days yeah do you guys understand he made eight and a half million dollars he, he he won two tournaments did you see that bit of history? What? The bit of history is Scotty Scheffler and Wyndham Clark finished one, two back to back weeks. That's never happened in the history of the PGA tour hmm. where the same guy won. And then the same guy came in second. It's never happened. Dude, before. Th that putt though was Wyndham Clark's putt Man. that rimmed out. Oh Dude. my God. And the ball's halfway in the hole. Yeah. It's wild. Uh, Mike Chase, my six-year-old daughter just said when she grows up, she wants to listen to the Monty show. I mean, that's a good woman. <laughs> <laughs> You've raised her well to this point. You know, I, I, I feel bad for Shohei because it's this kind of thing that ruins your reputation. It changes your career. It is, yeah. you know, it's one of those things where you just can't, you'll never get away from this now. Well, and look, I don't look at Otani as a gambling degenerate or something that's not how i look at him i i look at him as a guy who got played you got fooled at a, at a minimum at a minimum now i again as i've said a couple of times here i'm not sold on the fact that he had nothing to do with these bets or had no knowledge and and was was just totally in the dark I, I, so i'm not sold on that but i don't think this is somebody who's going around is like yeah uh let me check out the lines today before i head into the cage like that's not who he is so far, I don't anyway. know. I don't know how you can can be sold on that. Now that said, if the next interpreter that they bring in uh, gets in trouble, now we have to have a conversation about about the what's going on. But I hate bookies. Yeah, I hate bookies. Like you know, this guy was like, "Okay, you owe me four million dollars. Get me close to Shohei. Give me. He, you need. You make sure Shohei knows." I need him to hit a home run tonight. If he doesn't, I'm breaking your kneecaps. Well, and, right. Like it's something like that. And what's interesting about the bookie is in the article, I think it was Jeff Passan put yes. out yesterday in his article. He talks about how the, the bookie has said, I know I knew Otani was on those transfers, but I chose not to look into it. I just I, like, I know it's illegal for those guys to be gambling and putting money, you know, on stuff. But he was paying. He had paid up into that point, and so that's why I didn't look into it. And that's what's crazy, man. Like, you're choosing to just Bro. turn a blind eye, even though you know that that's illegal. That's $4.5 million. Like, that's, that's not gone. a little bit of money, dude. That money's gone. Yeah. $4.5 million to show, hey, is probably not much. Uh, honest to God, it's probably like a, 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 a fitty spot for us. But to that bookie. Well, for that bookie, that's a lot of bread. That's a dude. lot of money for that bookie, dude. I yeah, I just feel bad about the whole thing because Shoei is he has this sterling reputation that now can never be made whole. And does the bookie wind up in federal prison? <laughs> like, well, I don't know how you don't now. I, I don't I don't don't gamble. That's how. Yeah. That's how. And then there's Jake Retzloff, who is looking who is looking all nice in his white. Are you a Dodger fan, Mister Southern California guy? Uh, a little bit, yeah. I would say Are so. I say my family. So my my dad like kind of grew up in St. Louis, and so I've been a Cardinals fan my whole life. But my little brother's a Dodger fan. My mom's a Dodger fan. We go Dodger fan Dodger games all the time. So, <laughs> you're a Cardinal fan? Yeah, it's pretty random, isn't it? How did he get on this show? I, he's a good dude. Dude, I'm a Cubs fan. Die oh. hard. 
And I, I, you, the worst part is, it, back in my my radio career, I had to go and work in St. Louis and cover the Cardinals um, in the 2006 World Series where they beat Detroit. I'm standing on the field at Bush Stadium when they clinched that series, not enjoying it at all. <laughs> it was terrible. It's not funny, and you stop laughing, sir. <laughs> it is. <laughs> You it have is to watch funny. the magic of that team and David Freeze just the clutch air. Oh, that was a good time. Of course, yeah, my dude years Scott Spezio. Ah, those were the days, dude. That that was. You know what? Actually, covering a team like the Cardinals, that you, when you cover a team every day, it's hard not to root for them. Mm -hmm. Tony Larusso, who turned out to be just not very good with the White Sox, thankfully, because I hate the White Sox. But sitting in Tony Larusso's office and talking baseball every day was amazing. It was, it was actually a really good period of time. Um, so I've heard all about how great you and, and Bohannon were on Saturday in the scrimmage. And how do you think you did? How do you, how do you feel like you're doing in this quarterback battle, Jake? I feel like I'm doing great, to be honest with you. I feel like I'm playing way, like, at just a high level. Uh, like a, I feel like I'm playing like a veteran in the offense. I feel like I've matured into the offense and matured into myself in the offense. So uh, it's really exciting what we're putting on the field right now. Uh, when I, Especially like we're clicking a lot more than we were at this point last year, which is a huge, huge plus. And so we're like, we're 10 steps ahead of where we were last year. And um, it's just super, it's great to see the clicking this early and, and not having to wait till whether it's the end of spring ball or fall camp to actually get the click that we're getting right now. And uh, it's really good. I feel like I'm doing really well. And uh, the offense is, is seeming like we're rolling. Well, of the 137 quarterbacks that you guys have in spring ball right now, and I think it is actually 137. I could be wrong. <laughs> uh, you guys have a ton of quarterbacks and Kalani has been very reticent to get anywhere near naming a starter and, do you feel like you guys are heading in a direction where is there any clarity to that? Do you, cause I don't, I don't think we're going to, we're going to get an official announcement on the outside. I don't think we get an official announcement until sometime in fall camp. And is, is that how you think this goes? Uh, I, I haven't been told when there'll be an announcement of like who, who's the starter or not. Uh, I, yeah, it's probably will be wait till fall camp time. And, uh, I don't know the science behind when is what. I mean, the more competition, the better for us. Um, so that that'll be good. And so I, I mean, I'm just like, it's cliche to say I'm worried about me, and that's of course the answer I give to the media after sure, practice yeah. and stuff like that. But that's just really what it is. Uh, like, like I'm letting A Rod make the hard decisions on his own. I'm not gonna go out there and try to be like, all right, now make them sooner and with less time to think about it. You know. So, uh, yeah. Well. And the one thing that's for certain is like a dude like Gary is so great to compete with because like, he's such a great dude. And like, we have just had so much fun together, like on, on the field, off the field, in the, in the meeting room and stuff like that. And so uh, it's like, it's just been so great to have a guy like that in the room. Uh, it's, it's also great to have a guy like that in the room, regardless of the number of quarterbacks we have, the amount of young quarterbacks we have is too much. And so, uh, have an older guy in the room is a lot of is is kind of relieving. It's a uh, it's nice to have that little that presence that uh, the young guys are missing. Yeah, and I I think one of the interesting things is that it's not like you have a bunch of scrubs and then you've got one starter. Like I think this is you guys do have a significant number of quarterbacks, obviously, but you you have a significant number of talented quarterbacks i mean obviously you guys have you two have separated yourselves for the starting battle but i think one of the more compelling battles that we're going to see through the rest of spring and into fall camp who that number three guy is going to be at the quarterback position i think you have a pretty you have a pretty deep race there yeah i mean those guys those young guys are talented they're very talented they can throw the ball really well they uh Watching them mature over the last year, especially, you know, a guy like uh, Ryder Burton who came in last year, and then also seeing guys, you know, Cade Finnegan, who's a stud himself. He's just really talented. And then seeing Jason Borgay come in and uh, and play good ball. So it's it's fun to watch those guys ball out there and uh, and the young guys play with the young guys. And uh, 
uh, those guys uh, are always with the, you know, the, the twos and threes and um, they don't always get the best reps because of that, but it's, it, they're definitely uh, some good ball players and some good, some good instincts on them and some talent for sure. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's fun to watch that talent progression. Cause I know that's what happened in my career. You know, when it came from biggest jump in my career is probably junior year to senior year of high school where I made that big leap into okay. So now, now I'm really playing. And then like in junior college, obviously I started, I made another jump. And so, um, it's like, it's cool to see that in those guys. Cause I know that I went through something similar myself at some point. So it's, it's fun to watch those guys. And, uh, sometimes they make some throws. I'm like, oh, I hope I can make that if I'm asked to do it. But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah it's cool to, it, it's cool to see how deep our room is. And it is a lot of guys, but luckily it's, it's, it's a lot of talented guys. It's not. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Talking to Jake Retzloff, thanks to our friends at Big O Tires and American Fork. Big O Tires and American Fork, your complete car care experts. You talk about quality reps. One of the one of the things that I think a lot of fans that don't get to see football on a daily basis, they don't understand the difference between a first team rep and a second team and a third team. Like when you get down the depth chart with those guys and you're on the field, how much how much quality, how much more difficult is it to show your top end talent when you're not always running with the ones? Well, it's uh this was definitely the case for me last year. And so it's it's kind of funny because it's to me it's easier to show the top end talent. It's just like the basic stuff that's harder to do. It's like it's just to drop back with a clean pocket and make it happen because the way like reps work out, it's not always like uh you might get the second D end against the third left tackle or whatever. And you might, but you also might get, you know, the second guard versus the fourth D tackle or whatever it is. And so you get like these kind of mixed matches that, and then you, and then you start to understand that and you start to know where you're strong at, where you're weaker at and stuff like that. And so then you get to play like, it's a little bit like Juco, if I'm be honest with you, it's a little bit like, okay, you're not always sure what's going to happen on this play. You just got to do what you got to do to make it happen. And so it's definitely like, what I mean by that top end is like the improvisation and stuff like that. It's like, that's something I showed last year in practice because I was forced to not because I wanted to, you know what I mean? And so the top end is fun to show. It's the, it's the regular stuff, the basic stuff that it's harder to just rep, you know, clean RPO, clean rep. And like, even if you make the right decision, something like not good might happen. And like, that's something that's hard to live with. You gotta, you have to be able to, disassociate yourself from the results and be like, all right, I did what I needed to do. What happened as a result was not a reflection of my play. And so be able to understand that uh, if something breaks down. And then at the same time, it's like you can make the wrong decision. You can go for a 70 yard touchdown. So it's, uh, it's definitely unpredictable. It's way more unpredictable as, as the ones are, they're more predictable, but not in a way because they're harder to beat because even though they're for like more predictable, they're, predictably going to be in the right spot at the right time so it's like uh we don't want them in the right spot at the right time as a defense you know going against the defense and uh you know we want to be able to take advantage of putting them in a bad spot but right uh, so like yeah it, it's just definitely different and last year the jump from the twos to the ones was bigger than i expected it to be um now i don't think that's the case as much this year i think it was a little bit last year but this year i think we were more the depth is at a higher level uh, but like it was going from the ones to the twos and it was just noticed the pace of the game. It was like the route disruption uh, was different. Like it was, it was cool. It, it was fun. It was faster too. It was like, you, you know, the guys are going to get to a spot. It's the same spot, but it's just different speed. They're getting to there. So you gotta be on a different speed yourself, a different tempo, whether it's drop, whether it's, mm-hmm. you know, tempo time and throwing the ball and stuff like that. So it's uh it's uh, it's definitely a fun jump, but it's also a different game down with the twos and, like I said, it could be fun. You could show the the crazy plays with the twos more often than you can with the ones because something always something exciting is going to happen. Now you've talked a lot about how you know when you last year when you came in and played against Big Twelve defenses, you saw there was a noticeable difference in that talent as well. So when you're playing against you know your own defense, obviously you play against your own defense in practice. How do you feel like they they look this year? Because I think obviously defense is going to be a big deal coming into this season. It was talked about a ton last year. So do you feel like the defense is progressing just as well as the offenses, or where do you think those guys are at right now? Yeah, I, I think so. I think that you know obviously there's a lot of questions about Jay Hill coming in last year and uh, being his first year uh, at BYU and in the Big Twelve. And too early on, he definitely answered the bell and, and played pretty well. Uh, 
But uh, last year when, when we weren't producing well on offense, it kind of ended up getting reflected to our defense towards the end of the year. But then we kind of bounced back. It was kind of a low game. You know, I think our I think our defense will play really well this year. I think they're already showing stuff in practice that they weren't showing last year. We're just like, that's good. Like, that is going to get get an offense. That's going to get a, a pass protection. That's going to fool some people. So we, we're seeing that stuff and now, and we're like, all right, this is going to be some good stuff when we get to watch them do it to somebody else, not against us. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I love watching our defense play. I love the scheme. I love Jay Hill. That, everything going on over there is super exciting and super fun to watch and uh, not as fun to be against, but uh, <laughs> they're going to be pretty good. Give me some shout outs, Jake Retzloff, on your on your on your offensive side. Tell me some guys um that have stood out. Tell me some guys that you have you have seen progress. Shout out some of your teammates. I'll tell you what, my number one right now is coming off of injury last year is Hinkley Ropati. That guy, he's Arod doesn't want him to get a ton of really like team reps and stuff like that. Uh, but he's kind of forced to be in there right now, and uh, that guy is impressive. That guy with the ball in his hands is going to be a wrecking ball. Uh, he, I mean, he gets behind his shoulders like like nobody I've ever seen. He's he's strong. He's bigger than he's ever been. He's stronger than he's ever been. He's faster. It's it's so fun to watch that guy that guy play. Um, to be honest with you, I would shout out our entire tight end room because those guys are balling like. Those guys, to me, were one of the highlights of the scrimmage. Where was that tight end room? Whether you know, um, Tava got a touchdown. Kibo made some plays. Mason Pakahua made some plays. Uh, Reiner Swanson's coming along. He's uh, he's still a young buck, that's for sure. But he's coming along. He's a he's really really talented. That guy is a freak talent. Like, he's strong and fast and physical. And so uh, as he comes along in his young pup era, and he can kind of develop into a more mature player and a more savvy player. It'd be fun to watch that happen. Um, your receiver room is just deep as ever, you know. Uh, number five, Darius Lasseter. That guy's a stud. I mean, uh, you got guys, you know, JoJo Phillips, a young cat like him. He's come along well. He's He's got some talent himself. He made some play. He made a play in the in practice the other day. He caught a touchdown in two-minute drill. It was pretty sweet. Uh, kind of jump ball type thing. He, he made a great play there, you know. Uh, Chase Roberts is steady as ever. He just kind of moves along. That's Chase Roberts. He's just steady. He's just going to make plays when they come his way. And uh, he's not too flashy about it, but that guy does get, get excited. Um, uh, what else we got going for us? I mean, defensively, I'll tell you what, Jack Kelly, that guy yeah. is impressive. Like, as I watched the film from the sprint, from the uh, scrimmage on Saturday, I was watching the film, and, like, every time you just all of a sudden, like, you're just finding 17 somewhere on the field doing something, like disrupting something, uh, you know, to our offense. And so – that guy, especially defensively, like Jack Kelly, is something I would highlight, circle, you know, star next to his name. That guy is going to make some plays for us this year, and uh, I'm so excited to see it. I mean, that guy is showing, like, he's showing the abilities and the play of, of guys like Thule, who have been here for so long and have made plays for so long here. He's showing that, like, literally in his first spring here. Now, he had the benefit of obviously being in this defense at Weaver, but uh, he's showing it. He's showing he's playing like a veteran. He's playing fast. That guy can move. He could fly across the field uh, a lot like Max did when Max was here. So he's super fun to watch defensively. You know, we got some some young guys on the defensive side that that are showing up. Like you know, a guy like Tommy Prassis, that guy as a yeah. freshman, he's making differences on the other side of the ball. So that's fun to see that guy seeing going up against. I'm going up against him. I'm seeing him in the ones every once in a while. So uh, he's doing he's doing some good things over there. Um, but yeah, no, I, I mean. I, I shout out my entire old line. I mean, those guys are putting up some protection that's like we haven't seen in <laughs> a year. To be honest with you, like yeah. we're calling some protections now that last year were so iffy, and we're just like ah, we don't know. Hope we, we hope we can get this off. And this year we're looking like wow, we got all day to sit back there and make a play. I mean, we had a sweet play to uh, uh, who was it? Kibo, I believe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Kibo running across the field yesterday. Like it was hard play action. I. I drop back. I got Batty coming off the edge. I step up underneath him and start to roll out to the right. And it was like the whole left side was a wall. It was like I had nothing to worry about over there. The only thing I worried about was Batty running by me. And that was just a tight end coming on a backside, Love it. you know, a block. And so it was sweet. It was like that. It was just like I knew I had room. Like the only person in my way but was uh, Trevin who was playing right tackle. Like <laughs> it was like there's no defender. It was just him being there covering space because we had an extra guy out there. And then – I sprinted out and made a nice throw to Kibo and Kibo made a great catch and it was a huge play in practice. And so like, it's, it's so fun to watch those guys the way they are now. And um, 
Like, I mean, I, I could shout out every single one of those O-linemen. Those I love that you well. light up, though. I love that you light up talking about your teammates. I think that's – and I think that's one of the things that, that has been so important is that I've heard so much about chemistry and bonding and growing, and I know those are words that people throw around like cliches or buzzwords, but I think that was something that, that you guys really needed, and I think it's cool to watch you light up and – get excited about your teammates. And I know you won't be nearly as excited about BYU when they lose to Duquesne today. Uh, just about <laughs> yeah, whatever the tournament. Yeah, but I mean, that, that's how life works. You yeah, no, BYU all. is going to go kick butt today. We got a watch party in the uh, team room. Uh, we're not allowed to skip class, according to the coach, but uh, it is, I think, I believe, 1030 start. We're excited for it. We gotta, we're going to have it on the base tree. We're going to have food. It's going to be fun to watch that game. But uh, I, I need my guy Dallin Hall to have a big game. I need you. Dallin. Dallin's got to come out, and Dallin's got a Dallin. Uh, but Dallin. I think BYU is going to win. I, I feel pretty good about this matchup, Jake. I think I. So do I. I, I mean, I, I feel like you're going to see a win today. Got to. I think we're we're definitely making a Sweet 16 run. Uh, that game though, that game we're probably going to see Iowa State in that game. Yeah. And that'll be a fun one because we should have beat them at their place uh, late in the season. Um, it was a really close game. We were up. We should have won that game. And so it'll be fun to see them at a neutral site, see if we could pull that out. So, yeah, yet um, looks against Iowa State. They they probably should have gone down. And you could have yeah. played a little better defense, but here and there, there. What's good in your life? But before we let you go, what's good in your life this week, man? I, I mean, are you all football right now? What Like what's going on outside of the football world? Uh, what is it good, man? I just, uh, the weather's warming up, plan on hitting a golf course here soon enough. Um, Let's go baby. It's excited about that. Uh, one of our tight ends, Ethan Erickson, who's had a foot thing going on. He's, uh, he's, he's like walking around now and he got cleared to do all these things. And so he's like, dude, let's go golf. Let's go golf. Let's go golf. <laughs> so, I'm so down. So we're going to go golfing at some point. Um, what else is going on? Uh, shoot, we're going to, uh tabitha's way food bank today a couple of guys are going over there to the, do some community service give back a little bit uh, that's it. always good uh yeah man just spending time with the guys is a lot of fun these days i mean last year we had 60 new guys uh so like you said building that chemistry was tough it was hard on us and this year i already feel like our team is way closer than they were at any point last year and that's yeah. including with the new freshmen and stuff like that so uh it's cool to see that happening and you guys having a good time and so uh i believe we got you know outside of football we got some softball games coming up this weekend that we're getting the guys to go to it's a lot of fun we just turn up on the softball games it's uh it's pretty sweet to get guys out there and just go cheer them on it's uh the events on campus are it's fun to get a ton of football guys at the events on campus and we just go crazy it's it's so fun we just uh, i mean i i hate to point out the obvious but there was a little byu utah softball game this week uh, shoot you don't gotta tell me about that yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh i mean i mean a uh, freaky we're up one nothing and then they put a three spot on us in the bottom of six that was brutal yeah yeah that it was, was. and then to win the game on that crazy catch was... oh my gosh to, to like to all right first runner gets on bk gets on first base we got Leia coming up to flat she rips one right to the third baseman and she catches it and doubles up uh, that was brutal yeah that was like that's a tough way that's that's how you know the ball's rolling their way that day uh, so then I was over there just screaming at him. I was like, we'll see you guys November 9th. We're getting it back. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. November Dude, 9th, always good. You look, you look, you look energized. You look fired up. you like you. That's because I'm on the show with you guys. I'm on the Monty show every Thursday morning. I'm waiting for Thursday morning every day. Shout out Big O Tires. Shout out Ryan Eldridge over there. Go get hooked up. American Fork. That's our guy. Yes. That's our Make guy. Go find Jake Retzloff on, uh, Instagram, there's a link to buy his merch. Uh, get the BYU uh, Jew t shirt. Gotta go get the it. It's running out. The last 24 hours started yesterday. The shirt's coming down. Dude, Limited. really? Limited Limited shirt, time. Man. The Come shirt's on. coming down. You gotta go get it. It's coming down. There'll be a new shirt dropping. This is just the first shirt. And uh, we got to keep limited supply. So, you know, the price goes up when uh, the retail, the resale value. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know how that is. Business, business. Know, everybody, no, everybody resells our merch. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, go get Jake's merch. Find him on uh, find him on Instagram. Always good to see you. Have a great, healthy, prosperous week, Jake. We'll talk to you next Thursday. All right. See you guys. Have a good one. That's our guy, Jake Retzloff. I'm telling you, 
I'm so excited about the the talent that BYU has. I'm telling you, they got seven, eight wins in them. They got to play well, but they got seven, eight wins in them. I really believe that. They're going to, listen, I think Jake's going to win the quarterback job. I think that they're going to have some attrition in the portal. Yeah, I think in, in the post-spring ball portal, they'll lose some guys. But, I mean, you can't have that many quarterbacks that are this competitive. And they're, I mean, you're down to Bohannon and Ratzloff for the starting job. Well, you can't tell me that you're that that Fennigan's not going to be. You I know, have to think so. He, he, you can't tell me that he doesn't see his path. Like, obviously, Bohannon, you know, has been around, you know, and he's coming to the end of his time in college football. So he's got this season. And so, you know, you figure, okay, you know, if Jake starts this year, obviously Bohannon's going to see some time. You know, hopefully Jake stays healthy. I would assume he would, but, you know, who who the hell knows football. Um, you know, but but Cade Finnegan, to me, is the guy that's next in terms of what's on the horizon. Like, I, I, I think that that's a guy I would be surprised if he wasn't here and, you know, was not making an impact in the next year or two. Yeah, I would agree. I would totally agree. Guys, get your brackets. Let's go. Tomorrow yeah. we'll uh we'll rerun the amazing awesomeness that is day one of the NCAA tournament. Bracketology. Um that uh, old Uncle Monty told you. Hey, Monty. <laughs> Mon Uncle Monty told you. Okay, so officially you think BYU wins today. Yes, they're gonna beat Duquesne. Okay. They're gonna beat Duquesne. And I don't mind telling you, I, I feel really good about my final four. Note how confident Jake was in the potential BYU Iowa State matchup. He was very, he was very much into that. I feel good about North Carolina and Baylor. Um, I think BYU is going to have a hell of a time getting. Illinois is very good. Yeah, Illinois is very good. Well, and Illinois is that team you don't see very often. You know, like you're not. It's not like BYU. You know, has run into them. Houston Marquette. I feel good about that. And yeah, I, 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 I agree. Gonzaga Creighton is going to be a tough one for me to hit on. But you look at this eastern, the eastern side of the bracket. I'm telling you, Illinois. If, if Illinois gets more head and beats state, I think you're, <laughs> I, I mean, you know what I have been. <laughs> so, um, Macaque. Illinois. Is <laughs> Illinois is very good. Illinois is very, very good. Yeah. And I think that Illinois, Iowa state could be the game of the tournament. And I kid you not with that. So, obviously, I have Iowa State, but we'll see. Uh, enjoy the games today. As always, the Monty program is presented hey, by our good friends at The Advocates, theadvocates.com. The best injury attorneys in the business, you guys. Be careful out there. I know there's a lot of you road tripping. You get in an accident on your road trip. Make sure you hit The Advocates at theadvocates.com, where you can chat with an attorney live online. It won't cost you a dime. You don't pay the advocates unless and until they win your case. Until tomorrow, I'll say goodbye, Jake. Goodbye, Jake.